practices for growing cannabis. They can't tell them how to set up the lights, they can't tell them how to fertilize it, nothing. All that information is technically in this country <coughs> owned by a patent that Prairie Plant Systems has. So when the growers' licenses are issued by Health Canada, they do no more than essentially issue the license. They're starting to hire uh, people to go and do inspections. And uh, there's, in some jurisdictions, even RCMP, they're being hired to do that. But the only thing that they can legally do, unless they find that the power is being uh, stolen, and in some cases with Health Canada licensed operations, they found stolen power. Um, but uh, uh, aside from shutting it down for electrical reasons, because they like to show up, they'll have an electrician, or sorry, the fire department there as well, and, and if they can uh, shut it down, they, they will. Um, but, uh, and, and the whole, neighborhood finds out you're growing because the police show up in a couple of cars and the fire trucks will show up and so um, you know while they you know allow you to do it legally you, you lose you know privacy in a lot of ways because of it um, and so uh, um, yeah again you know they do not give people any information about how, how to grow which is quite unfortunate um, then uh, the other component to that is they allow a designated grower the idea being that People with licenses are sick and dying, and they need someone else to grow for them uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, now, uh, before the uh, Sletkopoulos decision I mentioned, a person could only grow for one individual at a time. The farthest that it could be stretched were three licenses could be in one facility. And unfortunately, even though the Sletkopoulos decision sounded as though it was opening it up, um, to uh, allow for two patients per grower, my knowledge is that uh, three licenses per uh, location is still the limit. Um, although uh, I, I do think in some cases that one's possibly being broken and six are being granted in one location, but I, I don't think the rules have, have been changed there. Um, okay, I got 10 minutes left. I'm going to kind of just brush on the, the, what I consider to be the good, the bad, and the ugly of Health Canada's uh, programs. Um, I guess the good part is, is that they exist. <laughs> um, for right now, 4,029 people in Canada with different medical problems, they have a card in their pocket that not only stops the police from harassing them, but quite often stops their family, their co-workers, you know, businesses, um, we're having a convention coming up this Sunday at the University in Nanaimo, and people with cards are not going to be arrested or kicked off the campus. Um, you know, if the security comes up to them and they uh, have a card, then, you know, we're not going to lose our club status for them smoking pot there. And that's a wonderful thing, not only for those 4,000 people, but I don't want to say all 30 million Canadians are aware of this because that would say a lot. Stephen Harper is our Prime Minister. So to say what the majority of Canadians are aware of is, is hard to say. But a good portion of the more educated Canadians are fully aware that cannabis has medical purposes and that it is legal and that there are a lot more people that should have access to it than currently do. And that means a lot because now uh, there is this understanding that wasn't there before. You know, when I was going to school in the 80s and the DARE officers got up and said, cannabis is bad, you're going to go to hell in a handbasket in a minute. Now, you know, young kids can stand up and go, but, you know, my, my grandma gets cookies off the club downtown and she's got a Health Canada card to do that. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, good that comes from the fact that the program is there to be sure. And for those people that are growing their own, uh, the benefits are, are outstanding. Uh, uh, as of June last year, which is where I got the last number, um, 2,800 people either have a license to grow or someone's growing for them. So, you know, that's almost, you know, 3,000 people that uh, have uh, better access to medicine than they did before. Not free, it costs a lot to grow, although 
I would imagine some of them are growing outdoor and it's not costing much at all, but the majority of these folks are growing indoors and are getting high quality medicine at a reduced rate. Um, as for costs, like, is the license a factor in like price and stuff, or is it no. just like growing the actual? Yeah, product? it's more in the cost of, you know, the uh, renting the space and electricity and the initial cost of the equipment, and uh, yeah, just you know, different inputs that you. So you just have to apply. You don't have to get like a yearly registration. And Actually, like you have to apply every year. Oh yeah, <laughs> and it's been. A, so I've heard recently sometimes re renewals are taking up to three months. People have been busted while waiting for the renewal to come in. Oh, People have been dirty. busted. Yeah, they're really tight on it. Once the cops find out you got a license in some communities, they're all over it and communicating with Health Canada. There's been some people who've had their physician <laughs> retire or pass away, and they haven't found a physician to sign the license, and the police are in like right soon after it's done. Oh. So, you know, submitting your information, I haven't got to the, the problems yet, but yeah, it's not something everybody wants to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so there's a couple good things. It's not all bad. But it's not that great. Um, I brought a couple of our letters from the city of Victoria. Um, this one here is a proclamation for International Medical Marijuana Day. And this one here is it's four years old now, but just last week, March 20th, 2006, where uh, after the Health Canada came, actually they flew people out here to do a presentation on their programs, essentially reading from the web page. Um, the city uh, wrote this letter, um, not necessarily supporting us, but in their own words, um, uh, while the federal, previous federal government, the Liberals, has endorsed in principle the efficacy of medicinal properties of cannabis, adequate production and distribution channels do not appear to be in place. In absence of this infrastructure, many Canadians will continue to suffer the debilitating effects of their illness without the benefit of effective pain management techniques. So the city requested a review of the current policies and such, and that really hasn't happened. This is as close to a business license as we will get. Um, but uh, to any you know intelligent uh, and aware Canadian, uh, the programs that are in place right now are quite inadequate. Um, I guess uh, the the part that I consider to be um, a catch-22 they've created is the requirement for doctors to recommend the use of cannabis. Cannabis is not yet an approved drug. There's nothing in the, uh, don't say it right, usually the compedium or the, uh, you know, um, it hasn't become uh, fully tested uh, uh, with the procedures that drugs are